Coding is hard. Sleepless nights, imposter syndrome, and a general feeling of a lack of knowledge. I mean, I feel like we've all been through it. And despite all of that, coding has been my best life decision. But let's take a step back. How did I go from not knowing anything to being able to be so good at coding to earn hundreds of thousands of dollars? That's where I introduced to you guys the Trident method. This is my special coding routine to take any coding problem and come up with the correct solution as efficiently as possible. A lot of people make the mistake of as soon as they're given a coding problem, they need to come up with a solution as fast as possible, as if it's some type of race. What ends up happening is they come up with the solution, then spend hundreds of hours debugging that solution and then just getting lost and stuck and it's just a mess. What I do is I take a methodical approach. You take the problem, go through three steps and you get the right solution every single time. So let's talk about it. First step, which is English it. So as soon as you're given a coding problem, before you write a single line of code in Java or Python, you need to write sentences in English. English it. Let's take a simple computer science problem. Let's say you're given a list of 10 numbers and you need to take two of these numbers and see if you can add it up to a given sum. This is the pretty popular elite code to sum problem. And right away, just start logically thinking, what's the easiest way to solve this problem? As if I was explaining it to a five-year-old. So naturally I start thinking, okay, I have a list of 10 numbers. I need to see if I can take two of them and add them up to a given sum. I'll start with the first element, add it with the second element. If we're good, we're good. We're done with the problem. If not, I'll take the first element, add it with the third element. We're good, we're good. If not, I'll add it with the fourth. If not, I'll add it with the fifth, all the way up to the tenth. Now, if none of those work, rinse and repeat the process by starting with the second element. Add that with the third. Add that with the fourth. Add that with the fifth. And if the second doesn't work, I'll go with the third, the fourth. I'll go through all potential possibilities to see if we have a solution. You see how I've taken this complex problem, simplified it down so that even a five-year-old could understand it? That is step number one, English it. Step number two now is pseudocode it. For those who don't know, pseudocode is as if Python and English had a baby. It looks like code, but it actually reads out like English. For example, you don't have like an if condition and then lines of code underneath that. You'll say if this, then do one, two, three, and pretty much anyone can read it. So for this example, let's write out the pseudocode. So I took our part one, the English portion, and wrote it as like a list of five steps that we need to do. And then we'll actually translate this into pseudocode. So as you can see, we're gonna go from English to pseudocode to actual code. Pseudocode is kind of like our middle ground. So let's go ahead and write out this function as two elements. Important thing, pseudocode doesn't need to compile, so it doesn't actually have to be code code. And we're going to pass in a list and a sum value, and then we'll write our function definition. Now, the important thing for pseudocode is make sure to have a lot of comments just so you're aware of everything that's going on. Function header for the to sum problem. So the first thing within this function is we're going to take the first element add it with the second, that doesn't work, add it with a third. So this is a for loop type structure. So I'm gonna do for i from zero to length of the list, do this, like whatever is about to come. And because we're actually gonna be not only iterating from like the, the second through the 10th, we're gonna be going from first as the first pointer, then the second as a second start pointer, then the third pointer. So we're actually iterating double within this. This is actually what we call a nested loop. So I'm going to do for j. So I'm going to start from there from i plus one, because wherever i, the initial start pointer is, we're going to start from the next element after that to length of the list. We're going to do whatever we write out. So I'm actually going to go ahead and actually add comments. So outer loop for the starting pointer, inner loop to get the second number to add. So like the first is the first starting pointer, then the second pointer is we're going to add it with the starting pointer and to see if we can get the sum. So given that, all we got to do is within this loop, it's pretty simple. If list of i plus list of j. This is how we index things in Python. We're going to see equals the sum then because if then return true. So this is going to be the condition to see if the elements are equal and add up. 
But if we've gone through all this whole like loop thing and still nothing is there, after all these loops, we're going to return false. So if no conditions are met in which elements add up to the sum, then return false. Then if conditions are met, return false true so this is our pseudocode as you can see it's taken a little more advanced than the english but it's still not full fledged out code just yet the third step is actually code it so we'll take this pseudocode and what i like to do just copy it paste it here and all i have to do is modify it to actually look like python and all i gotta do is pretty much simple things def and then i'll put like I won't call these things list and sum because those are reserved keywords in Python. Changing all the like the loop conditions and all that to match actually Pythonic code. So yeah, that's about it. We've taken this complex problem, we've dumbed it down into English, then converted it into pseudocode just so we have a proper understanding of everything. And then we've converted it into actual proper functional code. I know this isn't the optimal solution for the two sum problem. You need to use something like a hash set or a hash map. But if you were to make any changes, all you have to do is change it up in the English portion. So I'll be like, add element to a set and then I'd know what is going on and then I'd make the changes within the pseudocode and then you make the changes in the actual code. And the reason that this is the best way to operate is it makes it very clear your thought process. And so if you're explaining it to anyone, they'll be able to understand it, potentially help you out and everything will just be super nice and neat. A lot of people like to code this thing as soon as possible and then spend so long trying to debug it and just get super lost. Do not do that. Take a very nice, neat, structured approach so that you can avoid all those complications, burn Burning out all those bad things later on. Okay, but how do you actually get good at coding? Because I know if you're completely brand new to coding, step two and step three of the Trident method might be pretty challenging for you. So let's take a step even further back. And in terms of just learning how to code in general, I really recommend you go with the project based approach because coding, you will not get good at it unless you practice it. You need to practice to make perfect. And for that, the best platform that I know of is Cody.tech. It's this amazing platform where you can pick any program programming language, I recommend that you start off with their Python module. They give bite-sized lessons with every single language, plus a coding challenge, quiz, and on top of all that, if you ever mess up on anything, they have an AI bot to help you out. And so let me give you guys a demo of what I mean. So here we have this module within the Python in which they're talking about different number types. Pretty basic module in which they teach you about integer, float types, like decimals. And then after you learn it, they have a quiz so you can actually practice what you preach. They have a challenge challenge as well. So here it's write code that'll initialize a variable named var with the value five. And let's just say, for example, I create var with a value of six. I run this code and obviously I'm getting it wrong. It, it's failing the test case because the output is six. The expected output is five. But I'm so confused for whatever reason, I can ask the AI. And as you can see, the AI bot is telling me the challenge asked for this. In your submission, you made this mistake. So to correct this, you got to do this. This is obviously like a very simple problem, but as you get more complex, the AI bot becomes that much more helpful. This platform is completely free, but if you want premium features such as unlimited AI queries, you can use this code on the screen right here for 20% off. Another option that you can consider is codydex.io. This is like a game video game like platform to help you learn how to code in a very enjoyable way. It teaches you programming fundamentals or just how to build a website. And you guys know Legends of Zelda? Well, they kind of mocked this platform to be Legends of Codedex. And so as you're going through the modules, you're progressing through the game. They also have communities for different languages. Like they have a Python community, a JavaScript community. So you have people in your network to help you out and further advance your own knowledge. So you guys can skip class and play video games, but you're actually learning. The third resource I suggest is CS50. This is like a introductory coursework to computing in general. It was designed by Harvard and it's perfect if you have absolutely no idea how computer science works. I actually started this course back when I was in 10th grade before I took AP computer science and pretty much taught me like the basic fundamentals. Great course and plus it's free. The fourth one I want to talk about and this will absolutely happen to you and it is 
the best teacher, and that is failure. You will 100% fail as you're learning how to code. And that's actually the best thing that can happen to you. Because as you're failing and as you're going through problem after problem, debugging each of those problems, you will get better at coding. The coding problem that I went over, I've done it hundreds of times before. The first time, I was pretty bad at it. The second time, I was also kind of bad at it. Third time, fourth time, I got pretty good at it. And now I can probably do it in my sleep. Similarly, as soon as I graduated from my college degree in computer science, both a bachelor's and master's from Georgia Tech, I failed many, many times on my job, asking senior engineers for help, mentorship, not knowing what to do in like the code base. Trust me, failure is part of the journey and it's the most integral part of it. If you're going through everything super easily, you're probably not really doing the right things. You're probably just taking the easy parts out or might not actually be doing everything correctly. So failure is very integral. It's part of the whole process and it's actually good that you're failing. So then you can learn better. Well, that's about all I have in this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe. And if you want to know what coding projects you guys should do in 2024, check out this video right here.